lovelies you're welcome back again to my youtube channel good morning my amazing people good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time i remain your humble girl anointed lady tv if you are new to this channel you are highly welcome and if you are returning subscribers thank you very much for tuning in and if you have been watching you've not subscribed what are you waiting for guys please kindly hit that red button where the road subscribe and also put on the notification bell so you'll be getting more updates from this channel and i want to really appreciate as many that have been supporting me god bless you all let's watch this video below guys i will be right back we have received an acknowledgement from mr Hawkins. he thanked us for our letter and told us that our letter has been passed to the editorial team. But this is without prejudice to whatever decisions the federal government decides to take on the matter. Because we won't sit, we won't sit by and allow CNN or any news organization to throw the country to another war we'll based on news. And that's why we demand an investigation. Secondly, we did warn also in our press conference of Thursday that governments all over the world who have taken hasty decisions about Nigeria on this issue based on fake news like the CNN report should please seek for the truth. You see, fake news would be saying it here and everywhere that the next world war might be fought based on fake news and the decision of the government issue of the um uk parliament uh, resolution well let's we are not panicking at all as a government for two reasons number one the resolution of parliament of the uk is not the position of the uk government Secondly, I believe that no serious government will take a decision such as imposing sanction on a country based on fake news without thorough investigation. And this is why we are warning all the foreign countries to beware. They should seek the truth. They should seek for the truth of this matter. Fake news led to the death of 800,000 people in Rwanda in 1994. And fake news today is even much more dangerous because in 1994 there was no social media. The entire ANSAS tragedy was fueled by fake news and of course, and again, another thing we have against CNN is that look, how come that CNN in its entire one month uh, uh, long, long investigation did not even report that 37 policemen were killed, six soldiers were killed, 134 police stations were burned down, 164 police vehicles were burned down, 83 government houses were looted. You see, the, 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 the whole story was unbalanced, was unfair, was irresponsible. And it was as if it was an intent to set Nigerian people against themselves. And this is our position. And, we are, and honestly, our appeal to all foreign governments is that they have the missions here. There is the federal government. I should please check for the truth of this matter before they take any hasty decision. Well, I think only Nima, Ebagu, and CNN can tell us why they decide to feed the world with a doctored report. But like I said, CNN is not the only international news agency in Nigeria. Like I said here, Damiola Banjo is a BBC Prison Service correspondent. She was at the toll gate and she reported that soldiers came but they did not fire into the crowd, that they fired into the air. So this is why we believe that 
You see, CNN will be doing itself a big disservice. And its credibility will be short if it does not do a thorough investigation of this so-called investigative report. Because we have studied it's very simple. They should take the original tape of the 57 minutes, 5 seconds of God, of God sent we that they relied so heavily on and find out whether that tape had been doctored or not. That's the first place to start with. Second is to ask themselves, can there be a massacre without bodies? Can there be a massacre without blood? And even the so-called DJ Switch, who claimed to be streaming live on the site, and who claimed that she was depositing dead bodies at the foot of soldiers. Her video still did not show one single dead body. So if by extension a non indigenous like the governor of Lagos State is not an indigenous of Lagos State. If by extension it has become the governor of Lagos State, will you also rule Lagos State by, by, by forcing on indigenous on us? The governor is not from Lagos State. The deputy governor is not from Lagos State. The Speaker of the House of Assembly is not from Lagos State. The Senator representing Lagos West is not from Lagos State. Senator representing Lagos East is not from Lagos State. The late Barrio Shinawa. Senator representing Lagos Central, they are not from Lagos State. Half of the commissioners presently appointed in Lagos State, they are not from Lagos State. Half of the members of the House of Rest are not from Lagos State. For instance, even Senator, if, 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 you are saying, if what you are saying, you are saying that you are trying to just you are trying to to just give false information. We all, we all know that James Faleke contested for governor in Kogi State. He even challenged the election up to Supreme Court level. In Kogi, while you are still a sitting member of the House of Reps in Lagos, can you claim two local governments? Can you claim two states? You have to claim one. If you are saying that you have spent 10 years in Lagos to contest, did you also spend 10 years in Kogi? Were you staying in two states simultaneously? These this, this are questions of law. That's why we now feel that this thing is, is, is actually unbecoming. The only thing we can do, we have been shouting, there have been several groups in the Lagos State. There is a co-foundation, there is a Bile group, there are Awori, Awori, Awori group, there are Ibejebu groups, everybody. But yet, nothing has been done. We now feel that what we can do now is to use the due process of the law to challenge the government of Lagos State and that the federal government of Nigeria. That the time is ripe and the time is now for the inclusion of Lagos State in the governance. We have challenged them in court. We have filed a suit already at the federal high court. This between Barista Yakube Leto and the Federal Character Commission and others. In suit number FHC slash L slash CS slash 1465 slash 2020. It has been assigned to Justice Lehman of the Federal High Court Lagos State and is coming up December 15th at the Federal High Court for mention. That in the last two decades, marginalization and alienation of Lagos State has gotten to the crescendo. That we have non indigenous governing us in Lagos State and the non indigenous have been so heartless and merciless to the point that they have felt that the only thing they can do is to relegate the indigenous of Lagos State to the background and not involved in the governance of the United States. We continue to say that even if there are provisions of the Constitution that allows that if you have stayed in a place for a certain year, you have rights to be voted for and to also vote. If you have those rights, must you also after any that after winning that such election and getting that position relegate the indigenous of that place good day ladies and gentlemen good day my brothers and sisters my mommies and my daddies is your sister again your doctor your friend your girl anointed lady tv please if today is your first time of coming across my youtube channel please do subscribe for me subscribe and turn on the notification bell so each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.